I'm Julia Silverman. I'm an actress. I also narrate planetarium shows at Griffith Observatory. Shakespeare is one of those things that I didn't really understand when I was younger. It just seemed like a bunch of, I don't know, it just, it was a, it was a, a language, like a code that needed to be cracked. And even though I'd love doing Shakespeare and I'd done many Shakespeare pieces, when I started working, I did a, a class with Alfred Merlina. And his devotion to the text changed every way that I looked at it. And I wish that I had had his point of view on the previous Shakespeare pieces that I had done because he would just put out notebook after notebook looking at the different ways that you could look at a piece and coming at it from the text not very female or male but the text itself and that was it was freeing. I find great joy in doing Shakespeare. A phenomenal joy in doing Shakespeare. I don't always take great joy in having people come to see me do Shakespeare because not everybody has that same feeling towards that and I get that. But to take the journey I think what my hope for Shakespeare always is, is the journey I like to take when I'm doing it, is the journey I want people to have when they're watching it. There are modern texts that, that take you to certain places, but maybe without a certain kind of poetry or a certain kind of rhythm or a certain kind of, I don't know, even the bodiness of the comedy, you get it all. And there's something in the text and the way that you explore the text that I find so much more fun in Shakespeare sometimes than a modern text. I don't know if it's the precision, I don't know if it's the iambic pentameter, I don't know exactly what it is. And that's the joy I like to take. And for people to be able to watch it and get that poetry, the rhythm, but yet the fun, the humor, the humanity, the, oh my gosh, that could happen to me tomorrow. That's what I wish I could portray in Shakespeare. That it's not antiquated, it's not 500 years old. It's, we, these are human situations that happen. People fall in love, people kill each other, people die. People have birth, people drink in bars, people, have been doing this for a long time and they will continue to do it long after we're here. I think you need to find the heart of it. I think you need to be, um, <laughs> what did my teacher say? You don't have to be bigger than life, you have to be as big as life. It's kind of what Shakespeare does. So I think you need to be um, brave enough to go there when it tells you to go there. And brave enough to just follow along. Because it's easy to shy away, it's easy to to step back, I think. You just are taken with the story and you're taken with the human emotions of it. I don't know how to explain it, but it's where you're not being recited to, you're just living with it together. I've seen too many Hamlets where it's being recited as opposed to a show where you're just taken in the story. I saw um, one of the Scottish plays done Kabuki style. And it was stunning. It was just stunning. And I saw it for the first time. What, what is it I like about Amelia? I think she's both maternal and very feisty and very mm, earthy. She, she's saucy. But I think it is their husband's fault if wives do fall. Say that they slack their duties and pour our treasures into foreign laps. Or else break out in peevish jealousy throwing restraint upon us. Or say they strike us. Or scant our former having in despite. Why we have galls, and though we have some grace, yet have we some revenge. That husbands know their wives have sense, like they have. They see and smell and have their palate both their sweet and sour, as husbands do. What is it they do when they change us for others? Is it sport? I think it is. And doth affection breed it? I think it doth. Is it frailty that thus airs? It is so too. And have we not affections, desires for sport and frailty as men have? Then let them use us well. Let's let them know the ills we do. Their ills instruct us so. <laughs>